A couple of years ago, a game called Atomic Heart was announced. It's being billed as an adventure shooter or an action RPG that has been compared a lot to Bioshock. Except, it takes place in the USSR, it's developed by Russian devs, and it's an open world game. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, let's talk about the most unique open world game we've seen in years, Atomic Heart. So to do a quick setup, the game, like I said, takes place in the Soviet Union. However, like Bioshock, it takes place in a somewhat alternate reality type situation. In Atomic Heart's setting, that alternate reality is placed somewhere between the 1930s and the 1960s. However, technology has progressed a lot further than where they were at that point. For instance, robots, holograms, and the internet are all things that already exist in this world. You play a KGB agent tasked with investigating a manufacturing facility. There's two aspects of this that are probably specific to the game. First, a lot of the weapons are makeshift, created with a crafting system. Second, you are apparently mentally unstable and this has an effect on how you see things. Up until fairly recently, there actually wasn't a large amount of information released on this game. We had seen little bits and pieces here and there, but we just got this nice big dump of some gameplay footage that frankly reignited our interest. So the new footage shows us a little bit of exploration around a facility. We see some what seems to be marketing for robot models that maybe they were producing or I don't really know exactly. It probably has something to do with what the facility is doing as a whole. But as the protagonist explores deeper, some sort of rogue plant seems to grow out of the walkway and attack you with some nasty bugs. You take care of them with a melee weapon that appears to be a motor with a couple of saw blades attached to it, which is, I think, pretty clever. After handling a couple of these, you go in through a hallway, fight an android, which is relatively easy looking, and then you walk into a larger area and fight a something. I don't know what to call this thing at all, but I do know it will haunt me in my dreams. Through the course of this, I, I got kind of Bioshock vibes, given the way that he sort of heals himself. He's clearly got some sort of internal machinery. So you've got that instead of DNA altering chemicals, maybe a little bit more along the lines of System Shock even. He's also very clearly got powers, like he's able to detect maybe biological mass moving around from behind walls and whatnot. I mean, you can see a lot of influence here, and a lot of the influence, I think, comes from things that were influenced by System Shock or Thief. Like, there are a couple of moments that it felt a little bit like watching Dishonored or Prey, the new Prey. But I think more specifically, it's interesting to talk about how much better the melee combat looks than basically any game of that ilk. When we talk about, let's say, Bioshock's melee combat or even Dishonored, you really only wanted to use melee combat when you snuck up on somebody. And in Bioshock, you would then resume regular gun or power combat, or in Dishonored, like maybe you got a sneak kill out of it. Like in Bioshock, it was kind of a head start more than anything else, or something you did when you had no choice because it was obviously not the best. It was very simple, but the combat here looked much more along the lines of maybe even kind of Dark Souls-ish. Now I know that's weird on account it's a first person game, but the developers actually said in some respects they were a little bit inspired by Dark Souls with this game. So I think that it actually kind of makes sense. The way the mini boss at this gameplay shows, in my opinion, does an incredibly interesting job of sort of telling you, hey, the melee combat's kind of like Dark Souls. There's a lot of dodging to the side and attacking, which, I mean, Dark Souls. The developers describe the mini boss as something called a pliush or an organic enemy, which might just be the product of some secret government deeds. But understanding all of this, it seems a lot like basically everything is out to kill you. Whether it be the machines that are set up in the facility, whether it be this overgrowth of some organic substance that frankly is terrifying and turns into 
bad things that seem to want to eat your brain or something. And hey, it's the Soviet Union, so who knows what kind of nuclear elements will be integrated into the story. Now, aside from the gameplay, we also heard some interesting elements of how it's going to be released. First, we are going to see it on current gen hardware, but that's not really where I think people are excited to play it. I am personally much more excited to play it on PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. On account, according to the developers, they are taking advantage of the SSDs to ensure that there are quote unquote, no load times at all, no loading screens. They're going to be streaming everything in as you're doing it. And to me, that sounds great, especially for a game that is decidedly Bioshock-ish. If you remember how long some of the load times were when that first came out, yeah. And it certainly isn't as if games got better with load times. Actually, in a lot of cases, they got a lot worse. So the fact that's something that the next generation is specifically addressing is very exciting in my opinion. But I'm specifically excited about that for this game on account how varied it looks and given the fact that it is an open world game. There are so many different types of environments pictured in the screenshots from big outdoors areas to internal areas. And if this is all literally entirely connected without any load screens, that is perhaps one of the most technologically impressive things we've seen. Now that certainly isn't to say that may not set like a new standard or anything. I would love it if open world games suddenly became that in which you just roamed around and that's that. If you went into a door, like no loading time, you're inside. I'm mean, like, th that's the ideal, of course, but that's only something that could have existed on paper until the sort of SSD quote unquote revolution happens. And it's kind of happening right now. What's kind of wild is to what extent Atomic Heart kind of looks like a tech demo. So many of the things in it seem otherworldly, like something that you'd use to show off the way a type of technology works. In fact, you can even download an RTX tech demo from their website, which shows off some of the technology they're using, including the RTX ray tracing and NVIDIA DLSS. And overall, it's incredibly impressive. Even if you can't run it, there is a video that shows a lot of the effects off. It doesn't quite do it justice in the way that running it on your computer will. However, it will give you a good idea of exactly to what extent they've done. It's really impressive. Now, we can't not report on the fact that there was a bit of a controversy with layoffs happening at the studio. I don't know if this is exactly true or if it is exaggerated or whatever, but Reset Era back in January of 2019 reported that there were mass layoffs and quote unquote incompetency at the studio, which may have resulted in the fact that this game is taking so long to be developed. Or it could be that, I mean, look at it, it's insane. I don't know. I don't want to pretend there couldn't be problems in that way, but it certainly seems like they're on track despite all of the virus concerns going on nowadays. This is obviously a very good thing. A few years ago when this was announced, I'm not really 100% sure everyone thought it was real. It was really advanced looking for the time, and frankly, it continues to look better. In finding out all of the things that we found out, it sounds better too. In fact, if you ask me, I think that this is a game that if it actually delivers on the things that it's attempting to deliver on, may be a standard setter for the next generation. I mean, that mini boss we saw was basically entrails as a humanoid thing. It looked pretty difficult to beat. It looked like an actually challenging and interesting fight. And they very specifically called it a mini boss. The developers specifically said, while Pliash shows how agile your enemies can be, it's definitely not the biggest or deadliest foe. And I don't know about you, but that has me intrigued because this is a beautiful looking game with some really interesting concepts like makeshift weapons. That kind of brings in a lot of different concepts into one, from what it looks like, well executed thing. I don't know that it's possible for me to overstate just how much I'm excited for this game. And I think if it's even one fourth of the game it looks to be, Atomic Heart is gonna be big. 
But what do you think? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe and do not forget to enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.